Hello everyone, it's Professor Rako here, uh, continuing on with our cash and receivables chapter. This is our third video and we're doing another example of what we referred to in the last one as variable consideration. We said two common types are discounts, which was uh, the second video, and then sales, returns, and allowances, which is this one. So we had the same setup in the last video. Now we said these are contra revenue accounts, which means they're debit balances. They reduce sales. Uh, that's why they both are subtracted in this uh, equation. All right, so sales returns and allowances are sales that are returned, okay, of, by a customer or allowances provided that reduce the amount owed by the buyer. Okay, so either one of those. All right, so what we're going to do here is an example of them returning, uh, so a customer returning something here. So we'll just call this sales returns and uh, go from there. So uh, we got a company, they uh, sold 50,000 merchandise where the cost, all right, so the cost of goods sold would be 35. Uh, they expect 10% to be returned, all right, so that means 5,000 expected returns, all right. Uh, in 2007, the year of the sale, 3,000 was returned. That means they would have to, uh, we're going to have to account for the 2,000 still remaining. So we'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's walk through. We're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to break our page up and assume cash sales on this side and uh, credit sales on this side. All right. They're almost identical except for a few entries. So I'll just be putting same over here on the credit sales side a lot. And uh, we'll uh, go through it. Actually, let me scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> all right. So the first thing we need to do is record the sale. Okay. So this is pretty easy here. All right. This would just be cash. All right. I'm doing cash because it's cash sales on this one. And sales revenue for the 50000 All right, and that would be the same over here. Actually, let me scratch that out. We'd actually have accounts receivable and sales revenue. Sorry about that. The second journal entry will be the same. All right, the only thing different is this one's credit sales, so it's accounts receivable. And then we also have to record cost of goods sold and inventory at the cost for 35000 All right, and that one will be the same. All right, now during 2017, they returned 3,000. So those are actual returns, all right? So this journal entry right here is the sale. So we'll take care of the returns next, all right? So they return, so we'll have sales returns for 3,000, all right? And then uh, since these were cash sales, we will just give them the cash back. All right. I mean, think about it. if you go, if you pay for something for cash at Walmart and you return it, they're going to give you cash back. All right. If you pay on your credit card, they're going to credit your uh, credit card back. All right. And then we accept the inventory back and reduce our cost of goods sold by the cost. All right. So think about this. This was uh, essentially uh, 3000 uh, of it. And so uh, that's going to be the uh, 3,000 times the 70%. Sorry there, had a little mic trouble. This will be the 3,000 times the 70%. So why am I doing 70%? Because if you look up here, 35 is 75% is 70 the cost was 75% of the, of the sale. Okay, so that's why we're returning it at 70%, uh, all right? So 2,100, 2,100. All right, over here, We'll still have sales returns for the 3000 but this time we will credit back their accounts receivable. And then this second journal entry is the same. All right. So that returns the actual 2017 returns. All right. The next thing we need to do is now account for the fact that they expect them to return uh, 2,000 more. Remember, expected returns were 5,000. They've already returned three, so we expect two more. Okay, so this is going to be the estimate remaining uh, returns at the end of 2017. 
So this is essentially a, an adjusting entry that we're going to do at the end of 2017. All right, so we're going to do sales returns uh, for the 2000 that we're estimating to be remaining. All right, and then we call this a refund liability for 2000. All right, so you're, if you're do, using the KISO book, they don't get into as much detail on this, and I think they just look at the credit sales side of thing. Uh, the Spiceland book does a little bit better job of covering both uh, credit sales and cash sales. All right, so depending on what book you're using, you might determine the level of detail your teacher goes into. And then for the cost portion, we'll have inventory dash estimated returns and cost of goods sold for the 1400 so we're kind of adjusting cost of goods sold. This sales returns right here, remember, is a contra revenue account. So we're kind of truing everything up uh, in the period of the sale at the end of the year. So everything's kind of all the cost of goods sold and net sales will all be uh, trued up at the end of the year, uh, in, but in the year of sale. All right. Now on this side, uh, it's similar, but we still have a look. We have some differences over here. So we'll have sales returns still. For the uh, 2000, I guess that should be sales returns. And then we have an allowance for sales returns is our credit. So you can see that's a little bit different on this side. All right. We still have to account for the cost portion, inventory dash estimated returns for the 1400, which is just the 70%. We talked about where that came from and the cost of goods sold for the 1400 all right so let's jump ahead to the next year and uh we'll say 2018 returns of 2000 all right so this is the next year so if you look up here you know if you look back up in your problem uh remember we started in 2017 all right so now let's just assume in 2018 this wasn't listed in the problem but let's just assume the 2000 that we estimated is now returned. All right, so we've already recorded the return up here on both sides, right? So we don't need to worry about doing another return. So here, when they return it, we're just gonna reduce out this refund liability. We recorded that as kind of a, you know, to reflect the fact that we would have to pay them back their money. This is on the cash sale side, so we're giving them their cash back. No new sales return is recorded here. And then we'll accept back the inventory, the 1400 and reduce or zero out this inventory estimated returns account of 1400 Okay. On this side, uh, we're going to use the allowance that we created. So the allowance for sales returns. Uh, and that's going to be for the 2000 And on this side, since it was credit sales, we're going to reduce their accounts receivable balance, assume, we're assuming they haven't paid us yet. And then this journal entry right here will be the same. All right, so it seems like there's a lot going on here, but when it gets down to it, there's only a couple of things, small things like uh, right here, the allowance is different. Uh, and then, you know, accounts receivable as opposed to cash throughout the problem, right? So your main difference is uh, this journal entry right here between credit sales and cash sales. All right, so like I said, this, uh, depending on the book you're using and your professor, this might uh, be more detailed than they get into, and that's fine, or so you have a good example to look through. But if they go into a lot of detail, then you can use this to try to help you out a little bit. Uh, the Kiso book does have a footnote about why they don't really worry about trying to measure the net amount. That's why we didn't do gross versus net on this side. Uh, so. Like I said, pay attention to what your teacher is going to be expecting out of you and then use this as a good benchmark to go back and help you walk through uh, probably an example that your uh, professor did not cover in class or it's a little bit different than what they might have covered in class. So hopefully this helps uh, come exam time. Uh, be sure to tune in next time. We'll start getting into valuing our allowance for doubtful counts and then we'll finish up the chapter with some uh, notes receivable and examples on that. All right, so hope you're enjoying. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, be sure to tune in next time. Thanks.